Good afternoon, everyone. It is Refined Online, episode six. Super excited about this episode. Really good that you can join us. Uh, let me just start by kind of asking you a couple of questions. Let's see how we're getting on. So the one we all love, out of 10, how you got, how you're getting on at the moment, one being things are not really good, not enjoying things at the moment, and 10 being, yeah, they're great, everything's great. Let's write down in the chat box, uh, out, out of 10, how you're getting on. I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna go for a seven, seven, yeah, seven. What about you, kids? All right, second question. If you were on a desert island and you could only have one person with you, who would you have with you on the desert island? Hmm, that's a good question. It can be someone famous as well. It doesn't have to be someone that's like you know, as in like family or a friend, but it could be someone famous, like, you know, Bear Grylls or something. That'd be a good person to have on a desert island. But yeah, go on then, write them in the box. Let's see. Good. Great. Well done. Uh, we're going to move on uh, to the rest of the show. I hope you enjoy it. Um, get your Bible um, now. Have it ready. So when the talk starts uh, in a few minutes time, before that happens, let's uh, hear from Chizomo as we seek to play a game. You ready? Let's do it. Good evening, Refined! How are you guys? I hope you guys are all well. Lovely to see you. Um, so I have six refined trivia questions for you. This will test your, your knowledge on how well you think you know of all things refined. Okay? Are you guys ready? Okay, let's do this. So first question. This is actually a true or false question. And as always, put your answers in the chat box. All right, can you tell me whether this is true or false? First question. The theme verse for Refined is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. True or false? Now think very carefully because I may have been sneaky and changed the book. I may have been sneaky and changed the chapter. I may have been sneaky and changed the verse. So, yeah. True or false? First Peter chapter one verses six and seven. Refined theme verse. Is that true or false? Come on, put it in the chat box. Come on, guys. All right. So this is in in fact true. So for those of you who may uh, may be may come to refined regular, you do know that we have our theme verse, and it is found in First Peter chapter one verses six to seven. Okay, second question. How many youth leaders serve on the refined team? Can you remember us all? <laughs> if you think you know the answer, put, that, put, put it in the chat box. If you don't know, have a guess, have a wild guess, but I hope you remember us all. Um, so yeah, put your answers in the chat box. Come on, guys. How many youth leaders serve on the refined team? Mm, interesting, how many of us are there? I hope you remember us all. Okay, so are all your answers in? All right, so we're gonna count them all. So, number one, youth leader is Gareth, two, David, and then there's Peter, so that's three. There's Eunice, that's four. There's Rachel, that's five. There's Sherelle, that's six. There's Caroline, seven. And then there's moi. Eight. So there's eight leaders that serve on the refined team. All right, hope you got that correct. All right, we'll go to the third question. Who remembers the refined tax shop? I miss that tax shop. It had, it's, it, it was amazing. Um, so who can tell me how much the strawberry sweets in the, in the refined tax shop cost? If you remember, put it in the chat box. If you don't have a wild guess, Put something in the chat box all right so how who, who remembers how much the strawberry sweets cost those sweets are actually my favorite they're like little bundles of sweetness I love them so who remembers how much the cost so answer 
they actually cost 5p very reasonable I think all right next question this is a tax shop question again so we know that the strawberry sweets cost 5p but can you tell me how much the fizzy worms in the refined tax shop cost I wonder how much they cost fizzy worms I wonder how much they cost all right, are all your answers in? So, fizzy worms cost the amazing, astounding price of 2p. That's really cheap, 2p. So the fizzy worms cost 2p. All right, so the last tax shop related question. So we know that the strawberries cost 5p, fizzy worms cost 2p. But can you tell me how much the soft drink cans cost? So we have an assortment of soft drink ca soft drink cans. We have Coke, we have Fanta. Can you tell me how much they cost? Can you remember how much they cost? All right. So the cans actually go for the amazing price of 50p. All right. Final and last question. Who remembers the date? of our last refined meeting at Silver Street. It feels so long ago <laughs> and I miss you guys. But um, I'll give you a hint, it's a, it's a Friday because we have our meetings on a Friday, but who remembers the date? Was it like 10th of May, 15th of May? Put it in the chat box if you remember. Have a wild guess if you don't. All right, so the answer to that question is our last meeting when we're all together, all together, it feels so long ago, all together at Silver Street was actually Friday the 13th of March. All right. All right, guys, well done. I hope you all got um, all those correct. And I can't wait to see you guys uh, when all this is over. But for now, I'll pass you over to Gareth. Right, guys, it's time to get our Bibles open. So grab yourself a Bible. We're going to be going to John's Gospel. So find John's Gospel in your Bible, chapter 1. And then we're going to be uh, looking at chapter 1, verse 29, all the way through to verse 34. Okay, you got that? Well, let, before we start, let me pray. And then we get stuck in. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we have your words. We thank you that you show us who you are through your words and we pray that you would show us who the lord jesus is more and more and that you would change us as a result of what we hear this afternoon and we ask these things in jesus name and for your glory amen great will you get your bibles open good chapter one we're looking at verse 29 onwards in a minute but we have been let's think about over the last few weeks we've been thinking about um john okay that's john who wrote john's gospel and he's been telling us about another man called John, John the Baptist. Now, both Johns are super serious about giving people the facts about Jesus. John the Baptist, he recognises Jesus' superiority over him. And he wants to tell everyone who Jesus is. In fact, that was exactly why John the Baptist was sent. He was sent to tell people that Jesus was coming. That's the job that God had given him to do. And so as we read through uh, chapter 1, verses 29 to 31, I want you to pay attention to anything that John says about Jesus. Okay, so let's we read it. Okay, let's have a look down on our Bibles then. Verse 29, what does John say about Jesus? There's a few things, but think about the main things. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But the reason I came baptising with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Okay, so in the chat box, 
I want you to write down the most important thing you think that John says about Jesus in those verses. Write down in the chat box. Go for it. You got some things? Great. Well, let's focus on one particular thing, which I think is probably the most important thing that he says when he calls Jesus the Lamb of God. Now, for most people, that would be a very strange thing to be called. But for Jesus, it is the perfect description of who he is and what he is doing. See, John is hinting that Jesus would be sacrificed to take away the sin of the world. Do you know what? Thousands of years before this, God had told his people that, that, that there must be a lamb that has to be sacrificed so that people's sin could be taken away. The, the word people would often use is, or what we would use, is the word substitution. Now you get the idea of substitution, don't you? It's, uh, it's when one person takes the place of another. They swap places. But in this case, it was a lamb taking the place of a person and what people would do is they would put their hand on the lamb's head which was a picture of transferring their sin onto the lamb and then they would kill the lamb as a sign that God's punishment for sin had fallen on that lamb and not on them it was a sin that the lamb had swapped places with them and taken the punishment that they deserved so when John calls Jesus the Lamb of God, he's saying that Jesus is going to be the substitute. He's going to be taking our place. Now, many of you will know that uh, that happened when Jesus died on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, the sin of everyone who would put their trust in him was laid on Jesus. Hundreds of years before that happened, a man called Isaiah, he wrote a book and um in, ver in chapter 53 of um, verse 6, Isaiah says this, And the Lord will lay on him, that's Jesus, the iniquity, the sin of us all. And that's exactly what happened on the cross. All our sin was laid on Jesus like dirty, sin-covered rags laid all over him. And when he died on the cross, he died in our place. All the punishment fell on him, not on us. He swapped places with us. He was our substitute. He is the Lamb of God. And so it's not a surprise then that John the Baptist is like so excited and he goes around and he calls out to everyone, look, the Lamb of God. He knew that Jesus would make it possible for the sins of the world to be taken away. That's no small thing. That's the best news. That's the most important news that people need to hear. But actually, John doesn't stop there. The verses continue. He wants to make people completely clear that Jesus is who he says he is. Maybe there were people around who had doubts about who Jesus is. And maybe you have doubts about who Jesus is. Well, what happens next confirms that Jesus really is who John says he is. So let's read verse 32 to 34. Okay, let's read it. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. That's remain on Jesus. And I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testify that this is God's chosen one. The Holy Spirit comes down for all to see and remains on Jesus. Only Jesus, no one else. So that people can have no doubt that he is the Lamb of God. He is as it says in verse 34, the chosen one. In fact, when you read about this moment in, in the other Gospels, and maybe you can remember something else happens when you read about this event in some of the other Gospels, it tells us that after the Holy Spirit came down, and, uh, uh, came down on Jesus, God spoke from heaven and said, 
you are my son whom I love with you I am well pleased now I don't think at that point that many people had doubts that that Jesus is exactly who John says he, he is and so then John writes all of this down in his gospel so that we can believe that Jesus is the Lamb of God who can take away the sin of the world. But actually, that's not all that John says about Jesus. There is a little hidden nugget, a treasure in there. That, did you spot it? It tells us about something that Jesus will do, something else that he will do. Have a look at verse 33 and see if you can spot what it says Jesus will do. And write it in the chat box. Off you go. Any ideas? Let me read the, the last part of verse 33. The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptise with the Holy Spirit. Did you see that? Did you? Some of you might have got that. You see, after Jesus rose again, three days later, he um, he went back to heaven. And after that, he sent his Holy Spirit to live in and empower all his people to serve God, to live in God's world, in God's way. Now, I'm just going to I'm just going to say that again, OK, because some of you, maybe you've tuned out. Maybe you're picking your nose and you're a bit distracted or maybe you're just a bit kind of like, meh. Let me just say that again, okay? Jesus sends his Holy Spirit power. That's the same power that created everything. The universe, the stars, the planets, our planet and everything in our worlds. That same power that did amazing miracles, the miracles that many of you have read time and time again in the Gospels. And then the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. That power he sends to live in his people. It's mind blowing. And he doesn't do that so that we can go, meh. He does it so that we can see how awesome he is and we can see how awesome it is that he helps us and gives us the power to live in his world his way. Imagine if you were a, if you're a Christian here, what life would be like without the Holy Spirit. It, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it, to think what our lives would be like without the Holy Spirit in our lives. So as we finish, I want to suggest three things that you and, and I could do in response to the things we've just heard. And, and they all begin with S. OK, so here we go. Sorry, serve, shout. Sorry, serve, shout. Three things we can do to respond. Let's go for sorry. We should be able to say sorry to God for our sin. If we're already a Christian, we... We should say sorry to him for our meh attitude about being a Christian and about what Jesus has done for us. And we should ask him to forgive us. So that's sorry. We should actually serve him. We should remember that he has given us his Holy Spirit power to help us to serve him. He hasn't given it to us so that we can kind of just keep the spirit to ourselves. We're saved now and that's that's fine. That's good. Don't need to do anything else. No, he, he wants to change us. He wants us to help us to live more like Jesus each day. And so we need to ask him to change us. So that's serve and shout finally. We should shout about Jesus to our friends, to our family, to our people in our community. Now I don't mean literally shout, um, but what I mean is open our mouths and talk about Jesus to others we should ask the Holy Spirit to help us not to be scared I mean we know what it feels like I mean many of us have spoken to our friends or family or people in our community about Jesus and it's scary isn't it but let's ask the Holy Spirit to help us not to be scared don't let that be the thing that gets in the way and ask him to help us 
to say the right words when the opportunities come. So why don't we do that now? Let's pray and ask God as we say sorry and as we serve to serve and to shout. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that Jesus really is the Lamb of God and that he died and rose again so that our sins can be taken away. Father, we thank you so much that he promised to send the Holy Spirit to us and we want to say sorry that, um, yeah, really, that we haven't remembered that Jesus has done that for us, seen how important it is for us, that we haven't said sorry to him for the sin that we've committed this week, maybe. We thank you that we can have that forgiveness. And Heavenly Father, we want to, to ask you um, to help us to serve you. Holy Spirit, would you give us that power that we might live your way in your world? We find it hard sometimes to do that. And finally, Father, we want to ask you uh, to help us to shout about the Lord Jesus to our friends and to our family and to other people in our community. Father, help us not to be scared. Help us to be bold and have courage. Father, help us to trust you that as your Holy Spirit power is in us, that you will give us words to say that you will bring to mind uh, scripture, bits from the Bible that we know that would help people to, to know the Lord Jesus and to put their trust in him. And we ask all these things in his name. Amen. Oh, hello. Sorry, I was just uh, enjoying the glory days of uh, Liverpool. Oh, yes, when they really were champions of the Premier League. Oh, I love Liverpool. And it won't be long before we're champions again, yes, if it wasn't for this COVID virus. But we'll wait and see on that one. I've been doing a bit of reading, reading my Bible, been reading a few books. Uh, this one I recommend on Stephen Gerrard or Stevie G, as they say. All right, all right, calm down, calm down. But uh, yeah, that's my that's my that's my Scouse accent, and I've been working on it. Yes, Stephen Gerrard. Yes, and there's this this wonderful book on Jamie Carragher. Oh, great book! And for any of you who know who Robbie Fowler, oh, what a striker! Oh, and for the diehard fans, reading the book on the Liverpool dynasty. Oh yes. Great reading, recommend it if you're finding uh, things hard to find to do over the uh, this COVID time. But anyway, let's move on, shall we? Uh, it's been great to have your videos from the last challenge. Thank you so much, yes. Uh, we had some videos on the riddle. Yes, riddles. You said lots in, but my question is, did you see my cheeky, sneaky, hidden riddle at the end of the last show? Yes. Shall I read it to you if you didn't see it? Here was the riddle. I have no doors but i have keys i have no rooms but i do have space you can enter but you can never leave what am i did you get it i'll give you a clue yes it was a keyboard yes a computer keyboard i'm sure many of you got it because you're much smarter than the average folk yes very good here we go well before we look at the winner and the tuck shop yes all that tuck shop mm, we love the tuck shop yes 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 before we think about the winner who gets all this tuck shop i want to tell you about this week's challenge this week's challenge is called cool ting challenge yes cool ting challenge here's the challenge i want you to imagine that i give you 10 pounds and i want you to find the coolest ting you can find for 10 pounds the person that finds the coolest ting i will buy that ting and I will feature it in one of the future videos. Yes, there are lots of cool things out there. Can you find one for £10? There's your challenge. Anyway, let's see who the winner was from last week's riddle challenge. Here we go. Cheerio. The riddle is, poor people have it. 
rich people need it and if you eat it you'll die what is it the answer is nothing did you get it <laughs> Well, this is the outro. Thanks for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, just a couple of things before we go. Um, if you won the challenge, then you're, you're going to expect uh, some awesome tuck shop coming your way. Uh, so you expect a text message or an email from uh, from me. Uh, so I know where to deliver the tuck shop to. Um, but also before we go, remember that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away our sin. And also that he's someone who sends his Holy Spirit that we might be able to say sorry, that we might be able to serve him and that we might be able to shout about him um, each day. So think about that this week and I'll see you next week. Take care. God bless you. Bye. I'm as light as a feather, but even the strongest man cannot hold me for more than five minutes. What am I? Your breath. The more you take, the more you leave behind. What am I? What's red, white, and is trash? Ask the FC. <laughs> Here's my riddle. I am taken from a mine and shut in a wooden case from which I am never released and yet I am used by almost everybody. What am I? The answer is pencil lead. I have one face but three hands. What am I? I'm a clock. Eh?